Hello, my name's A.D. McKinnon, and I'm an aspiring filmmaker living in England. Back in about 2010, my brother, my friends, and I decided that we were going to make a, a feature-length film. And after about three and a half years of shooting, um, we had what was to be our first movie. Is that Randy from the pub over there? What the hell's going on? Yeah. Can we just rehearse and play or something? Shut up. We have a rehearse to play outside. I don't know. Very dedicated performers. It was arduous. It was hard. Uh, it was fun. And it taught us a lot about the process of making a film. It was also a real testament to how technology had really opened up the door for amateur filmmakers. All the early movies that Owen and I did were done on no more than a, a flip video camera and a, and a cheap tripod. And one of my early attempts at a, at a homemade crane, it was a big metal pole with a camera on the end of it. I mean, when you look at these movies today, obviously they don't hold up to any kind of professional standard, but uh, they were our first attempts at trying to reach that standard without budgets of any kind, really. But in order to reach that standard on some level, you do need real equipment. And so, little by little, over the next four years, we gradually built up our kit. New cameras, sturdier tripods, lights, microphones, lenses, heavy-duty SD cards. You know, it just builds up and up and up and up the list of things that you need. But it's not for nothing, because the, the difference is there on screen in the images themselves, and uh, the way they look and the way they sound, and they're just a hell of a lot closer to the standard that people expect. You know, it's hard work, it's expensive, uh, it doesn't really pay the bills, um, but we do it because we love it, and we love movies, and there's nowhere else we'd rather be. Um, but when something like this happens, all of that gets derailed. So we were on location shooting a sequence for a short film that we're making and uh, it was a tough location because you know we were there for two days and it was rough terrain and slippy and quite dangerous. That plus uh, our shooting days there happened to line up with uh, Storm Doris so uh, it was incredibly windy as well. But the shoot was actually going really well. Um, I was happy with pretty much everything we got, and uh, everyone just seemed in good spirits uh, that day, and the last day. Uh, we only had one more shot left to do, um, which involved heavy heavy makeup. So Charlotte, the the actress, uh, who had the, had to go had to go off and get that applied. We set up the shot as we waited, and yeah, I mean, I was excited um, both to see the makeup because I hadn't seen it before, but also to finish the shoot. Uh, we were one shot away. Uh, you know, the end was was really in sight. After we got the call that Charlotte was ready to be brought back to the location, uh, I sent James, uh, one of the other actors, to go pick her up. Um, but about Ten minutes later, uh, we saw James running back down the hill from where the cars were parked, uh, sweating and panting and screaming at the top of his lungs, uh, we've got to call the police, we've got to call the police, our cars have been broken into and everything's been stolen. Um, so we went up the hill to where the cars were and sure enough, a window in each car had been smashed, glass was everywhere, they'd really just grabbed everything that they could. Everything from 200 pound tripods to uh, to a jar full of coppers that was, you know, near the front seat. As you can imagine, we were very quick to call the police. Uh, we gave them the information that we could give them, you know, trucks that we'd seen, license plates on suspicious vehicles and things like that, but nothing really came of any of this and, and the police ended up being not very much help to, to our situation. We weren't lucky enough to have the insurance cover any of it, uh, so really I mean, I'm just trying to be as honest as possible. We're a group of amateur filmmakers who have saved up for years to get every little piece of equipment that we have, and at this point, we're out of options. And we're, we're appealing to the people of the internet to, to, to help us out. I know, I'll put the link here. How, there, there we go, in a, in a little thing. About a thousand pounds worth of stuff was taken in total, um, but some of that was sentimental, personal belongings that can't even really be replaced. And in terms of film equipment, it was about 800 pounds worth of equipment. Owen and I are in the middle of shoots at the moment, in the middle of making movies, and 
and we don't have the kit we need to make those movies. So if you care at all about uh, what we've been doing uh, or what you've heard and seen in this video, if you haven't heard of us before, please, please uh, just go to the to the link and and donate whatever whatever little thing you can give. Um, it would be so appreciated. In fact, you'll even see on the website that uh, Owen's put something where anyone who donates more than ten pounds will get a a special thanks, a credit at at the end of uh, at the end of our movies. So his movie Shed, my movie Wait. Um, yeah, you'll get a credit at the end of those films, which you know it's a small gesture, but it's really all we can offer at the moment, um, just to show our our gratitude. The details of what was taken and what we're trying to raise and all that stuff is actually on the website. This video is really just trying to tell the story of, of what happened and, and, and how much the equipment and what the equipment means to us. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I wish that I was coming to you with, uh, you know, under nicer circumstances, but uh, this is the situation we're in at the moment and uh, we could really use your help. To any of you that are able to find something to donate, I just, from the bottom of my heart, and all of us here, thank you so, so much. And at the very least, thank you for taking the time to watch this video.